The period of transition was a slow and gradual period in the history. In Europe, it came during the 14th to 17th century. However, in India, it was witnessed during 18th century. During this period, we witnessed numerous developments in health, education, sanitation, infrastructural development, and all this information that we have about the period of transition can be obtained from two types of sources, the primary sources and the secondary sources. Primary sources are those sources which are given directly as a part of history. So the manuscripts, the newspaper cuttings, the interviews, photographs, artifacts are all examples of primary sources. Under secondary sources, we have information from other books, scholarly articles, journals. So all those form the part of secondary sources. This period of transition has been very important in history because it marked the end of Middle Ages and the beginning of the period of Renaissance and Reformation. The period of transition is marked with three major developments. Those are Renaissance, Reformation and Voyages of Discovery, the Age of Explorations. We would understand these three one by one. To begin with, the first is Renaissance. Now, Renaissance is coming from a French word which means rebirth or revival. The main idea under Renaissance is that the idea of questioning, reasoning, the issue of circulating new ideas came into existence. The, so, the sole focus during Renaissance was interest in the present world rather than the next world and knowledge only and only for the benefit of human beings. So this period of Renaissance saw reformation, uh, saw changes in the field of art, in the field of literature, science, humanities, politics, religion and all the related fields were affected by Renaissance. What had been the factors which were responsible for Renaissance? The features of the Renaissance are very, very important. And then we would focus on which factors actually led to Renaissance. So four major features. The first important feature is rationalism. The idea and the attitude of questioning why certain things happen knowing reason behind everything. So that was the first feature, the first characteristic of uh, Renaissance rationalism. The next important characteristic was humanism, allowing pre people to freely express their ideas, their beliefs and not focus on divine, but focus on human. So moving from the idea of divine to human was the basis for humanism. The next important aspect was scientific spirit. This focused on scientific development. So the steps moved as first we observe certain things. Once we observe, we focus on experimenting and finally we conclude. So this focuses on the scientific spirit, how scientific approach can be implied. And this was the basis for Renaissance, the changes and the questioning attitude. The last important was the spirit for inquiry. Now this focused on the idea of questioning. So this inquiry came through various ways. It was either through experimentation, it was either through explorations or it was through the various discoveries which were seen. So all these mark the important features of the revival, the rebirth, which is known as Renaissance, the period of questioning arising of new ideas. But it was not just this. There were various factors which were actually responsible for the origin of Renaissance. The first was the capture of Constantinople by Turks. Now Constantinople, the present day Istanbul in Turkey, was the region where Greeks actually lived. Now these Greeks had to flew away and they fled to the regions of Italy. So Greeks moved to the regions of Italy and here in Constantinople, it was mainly the Turks who came to 
power. Now the Greeks who moved to Italy took the manuscripts and imparted, started to impart learning in the regions of Italy. The next was the decline of feudalism. Now with the decline in feudalism, the idea of learning, development of new web avenues for trade started and with this trade there was more commercial activities so definitely the commerce activities started to pick up because of more trade which led to new trade routes so if you have two places which are a and b and the commercial activity exists between these two places what would be the scenario there would be new trade routes that would start to originate so with more commercial activities new trade routes started to come up and also, the most important factor here was invention of printing press. With printing press, learning and awareness came into existence. The next important thing that we need to understand is the period of reformation. Reformation was nothing but a change in the system of the church. So, the Catholic churches transformed initially into the Protestant churches. Now, there were two important phases under reformation. The first part was during the early 16th century. This marked the period of Protestant churches. Now, in this period, what happened? Christianity split into two divisions. Catholics and those who did not follow or did not abide by the rigid rules of Catholic uh, churches started to move towards Protest, uh, Protestant churches. So that was the early 16th century. The second reformation phase was the late 16th century and this were the changes within the Catholic churches. So within the Catholic churches there were numerous changes which came into existence during the late 16th century. So reformation was the movement against the church, against the authority of Pope and Martin Luther who was a monk from Germany was one of the pioneers who led this idea and led this reform. So reformation movement very very important and as we mentioned in the time of Renaissance, Renaissance was a revival and rebirth in all the fields of art, literature, religion, politics and therefore reformation which is a religious offshoot of Renaissance became very important and this led to the end of the medieval period and the beginning of the modern era. The last important thing Thing that we need to understand is voyages of discoveries. Now during this time exploration, the age of exploration came into existence. With exploration new lands were discovered, new areas were discovered, the feudal system collapsed and uh, sailors were daring. The rulers, the merchants sponsored their trips and they started to move to places far off. Also at this point of time nation states started to emerge and rulers started to uh, ask their sailors to explore more lands to discover more lands. Now here we have some of the important uh, sailors and explorers that we would talk about. The first important sailor we know is from Portugal, a Portuguese sailor known as Vasco da Gama. Vasco da Gama discovered the route to India. He moved from the region of Portugal, as you can see, through the Cape of Good Hope, finally to Calicut in India. So the region of Calicut was the first region where Portuguese landed to India. Portuguese started to develop good trade relations not only with India but also Southeast Asian nations like Indonesia, Sri Lanka, East Indies and then we also have East Asia, China and Japan. So Vasco da Gama discovered the route to India we very well know. Uh, started from Portugal through the Cape of Good Hope landing onto the region of Calicut. The next is Bartholomew Diaz. Bartholomew Diaz was again a Portuguese sailor who started from the region of Portugal and moved to South Africa at the Cape of Good Hope. So he discovered the Cape of Good Hope. Cape of Good Hope again became a major part of Vasco da Gama's later journey. The next important sailor that we know is Christopher Columbus. Although he was an Italian sailor, he was sponsored by the Spanish Queen Isabella. Now Christopher Columbus
Columbus is known to have four different trips to America. The first trip was to the region of uh, Cuba and later on till the regions of America. So Christopher actually identified and discovered this new continent and once he saw the people here, he named them Indians. So Red Indians was the name that was given. However, the name America was not given by Christopher Columbus. Uh, name America was not given or has not been uh, on his name. The name America is on the name of Amerigo Vespucci. Amerigo Vespucci followed the same route as Columbus. So he moved through the same route and visited the places which Columbus did. Finally, on the name of Amerigo is the name America, the present continent of Americas. The last important sailor that we want to discuss today is Ferdinand Magnellan. Now, Ferdinand Magnellan is again important sailor, again a Portuguese sailor, but he was in the service of Spain. Originally a Portuguese sailor in the service of Spain. Important to note, Vasco da Gama, Bartholomew Diaz were Portuguese sailors started from Portugal. Uh, then we have Christopher Columbus who was an Italian sailor who was sponsored by Spanish Queen Isabella. And Ferdinand Magnellan was a Portuguese sailor in the service of Spain and his idea was that the earth is round. So he started his journey through the Atlantic and said that from the Atlantic he would move towards the Pacific and also he crossed the southernmost part of South America in order to reach the Pacific Ocean, crossing the Atlantic Ocean, reaching the Pacific Ocean and he reached the regions of Philippines. He was killed in Philippines, however, his voyage did not end. His ships, his ship, his ships came back and this was the idea where the complete voyage around the world was done. So Ferdinand Magnellan was again a very very important sailor. So these were some of the important sailors in history on whose ideas we have the age of exploration, the age of discovery that is Armam. So three important developments as we have noted, the period of Renaissance, the period of reformation and the voyages for discovering new lands. With the age of Renaissance reformation and voyages, there was another important development, a major transition in Europe, and that was industrial revolution. Now, what was so classic about this industrial revolution? The sole idea was to produce more and more goods, but how? The cost should be very, very low. And if the cost is low, what can be done? The profits can be even higher. So with this industrial revolution, the idea of capitalism got a thrust because the people, the owners, the investors were now able to produce huge amount of goods at a significantly lower cost and therefore had huge profit margins and this capitalism paved the way for further industrial revolution. So industrial revolution is attributed to England and it is believed that in 1750s the industrial revolution started. So in 1750 when the industrial revolution started we also call this age as a machine Age. It is not the case that before 1750 there were no, no basic machines that were into existence. Definitely yes. Before 1750s we saw the use of plow, we saw the use of air pump, we saw the use of printing press as well. All these were discovered before the industrial revolutions. However, with the industrial revolution coming in, Faster ways of development started to come in. Steam power was discovered, steam engines were discovered, power looms came into existence and moreover it was not just the mechanical changes that happened in the life, it was more of the way of thinking that changed, the idea, the mentality that changed. So this machine age was a time when all the human power moved from a human to a machine power and therefore it is known as a machine age. So rather than using man, rather than using animals as a source of power, source of work, 
machines started to replace them and since one machine could replace many people or many animals there was a significant change in the way the life revolved or uh, the life evolved or the changes in the industrial revolution took place so the most important thing the development how these industries started to came in we saw initially the guild systems guild systems was a system where people with common interest used to stay together and this guild system was replaced by domestic system domestic system implied use of simple machines in the household and production in the household the swaraj system of charkha as we can say is an example of domestic system but this system became obsolete now this domestic system was replaced by a factory floor so factory system came into existence and this factory system was further interesting because this factory system was managed by the capitalist the simple machines the simple tools the simple animal power human power which could be used in homes was replaced by machines now as it was replaced by machine people were replaced by machine so there were huge factories coming into existence for those factory floors Ma manual labor was required but that labor was badly placed in worse condition and the livelihood the socio economic status of the people was not good they were kept uh, kept in shanty areas with the poor sanitation poor infrastructure poor healthcare facilities and everything the early forms we can say of the capitalist society was seen through the industrial revolution the everything that came into existence here need to be transformed but there was a reason why this industrial revolution started first in england can you wonder why there were many countries across the world but still this small nation of england was the region which dominated the world when it came to industrial revolution so it started with this region of england as you can see in this world map and this small region was able to rule the complete world and bring changes and supply material supply finished products to this region so there are seven reasons which have been cited why industrial revolution first started in england the first reason we can see is the trade now what kind of trade when factories came into existence in england there was slave trade now again factories were running on machines so a lot of production could be done in small time a lot of profit margins could be generated because the cost was relatively less a same bed sheet which used to be prepared by hand could take around 10 days 15 days by one uh, artisan was replaced by nearly 10 to 15 bed sheets in a day by the basic machines that started so there was lower cost more profit margins for the capitalist and therefore england turned out to be an unraveled power with most of the inventions lying within the territory of england during that time now inventions that started in england are again very very interesting we would understand those in a while the next is now when there is so much production you need to supply it there should be someone who would buy that so Britishers started to establish colonies, and these were the centers where people would buy their products. Not only buy their products, but also if you have machines which can produce so much, you require a constant raw material. Where would you get the raw material? So the minerals, cottons, for all this, you cotton all this you required. the sources of raw material so asia and africa were indeed the best sources of raw material and the bigger colonies of uh, the uh, europe or the england during that time the next important thing was enclosure movement what was an enclosure movement as the name suggests enclosure movement was an interesting movement where initially people used to have small land holdings 
Under the inclusion movement, all these small land holdings was consolidated into large land holdings. Now, large farm was easily maintained, but what happened? The owners, the peasants who used to work in the small farms lost their jobs. They became landless. They became unemployed. So, these people moved to the factories, moved to the cities of England where the industrial revolution was growing. And because the people moved here, there was no shortage of labor. The factories were witnessing extensive and huge amount of labor. Now, these factories at that time required cheap labor that could live near to the factory floor in the unhealthy conditions and still work for the production. So this inclusion movement gave way for huge amount of peasants and laborers to move to industries in the cities of England. And the next important was during this time, the serfdom disappeared. That means the people were not tied to their lands anymore and they were not tied to their land. So they were free to go for any other job. They were free to pick their another job. Besides this, another important thing was good transport. Now, when there is huge production taking place, you need to supply that to different parts of the world, to the colonies. So shipping should be developed. Good shipping was available through the routes of England. Also, England was one of the regions which was bestowed was with abundant natural resources. Huge amount of water supply, huge amount of iron and coal required for the basic industries. Also, there was a stable government. That means there was no interference of the government, no domination of the feudal class and was a perfect destination for the rising atmosphere for industrial revolution. And this are some of the major reasons why England flourished as the region or the center of industrial revolution and no other country could overtake England till very very late period. Also the other nations did not have these advantages. Some of the nations would neither not have the natural resources, would not have the abundant iron and coal or would lack capital, would lack labor and all these things or a stable government and all these things were fulfilled by England and therefore England was the reason, uh, the region where the industrial revolution started and the reasons we have quoted for the growth of industrial revolution. Now, whenever a revolution takes place, it's not that simple. It is tied with numerous inventions. The first thing was the idea with cotton manufacturing of textile. So numerous inventions tied to cotton. The first was the idea to have finer and cheaper thread. How can we produce more fine and cheaper thread? The first thing that was discovered was a spinning jenny. Now spinning jenny was discovered by James Hergivis and a spin yarn on eight spindles at a time. So it could spin yarn on eight spindles at a given point of time. But this was adopted by a machine which used running water and could smoothen and fasten the process. This machine was developed by Arkwright. Arkwright used rollers in order to move, make this much more smoother and faster. However, later Crompton brought in a combination of the spinning jenny produced by Hargivis and the idea of running water by Arkwit and produced a new machine which was known as mule. Now this mule was much more faster in the speed and produced fine yarn and fabric. John Kay also during this time invented flying shuttle which could increase the speed of weaving. So these were the developments which were related to the spinning. Now came the power loom. Cart Cartwright invented power loom. His idea was that the horsepower, bullock power should be replaced by water power and steam power. So he merged the concept of steam power and water power and created power looms. And these power looms were capable of producing more and more. The next important thing was how to 
separate cotton from the seeds this was a tremendous job despite of the fact that a lot of cotton was produced and a lot of cotton could create the cloth what was required was the cotton gin machine or the ginning machine this cotton ginning machine was developed by ili whitney ili whitney what he initially did was separated the cotton and seeds and as a result this machine with this machine the cotton and seeds could be separated 300 times faster than the original way of separating that so the production started tremendously since it was 300 times faster the way the cotton was separated from the seeds in 1760 it is believed that england imported 2 million kgs of cotton however in 1815 it imported 50 million kgs of cotton and in 1840 it imported nearly 250 million kilograms of cotton so there was a steep rise in the import of cotton the only reason was the cotton ginning machine a very simple a very basic machine but it could make the task much more faster much more smoother also for weaving uh, robert uh, roberts richard roberts discovered the weaving machine uh, and elias hopes started with the sewing machine so once we have the cloth there is the uh, the weaving which is done for the cloth and then stitching or sewing which is done is again important the next important invention was the invention of steam engine initially newcomb in 1712 gave the steam engine however in 1769 james watt gave the steam engine these steam engines replaced the human power the animal power the bullock power the horse power and revolutionized the way the production could take place now since with the steam engine the production was jumping what was the next thing that was required the next thing was required was more machines so for more machines with more steam power you need to have more machines for more machines what was the next thing that was required was blast furnace now blast furnace could uh, use the low grade iron and convert it into steel the process got very very cheaper over time and with this blast furnace numerous industries started to develop further so it was a systematic way from where we say initially it was the textile which developed later with the steam engine blast finance came in and infrastructure became the basis now whatever was produced need to be marketed need to be sold so transportation became the next important thing so george stevenson uh, started a steam engine and that was to take the coal from the mines to the port and this was through the railway line however in 1830 the first railway was used to carry both the passenger and the freight from liverpool to manchester and this was the first development in the transport system later on roads improved canals were dug and through the idea of macadam macadamized roads or what we call as pakka roads now were developed and these pakka roads further led to a idea of strengthening infrastructure more production more expansion of facilities and transportation which could be available to the periphery connection of rivers streams lakes and canals was made much more simpler the next was how industrial revolution impacted the life as we mentioned industrial revolution brought a massive change in the lifestyle by mass production the production jumped significantly there was a lot of surplus production and this surplus production could be sold only to the colonies because uh, england itself could not accommodate so much production so if you want to sell it outside you need to acquire colonies for acquiring colonies you need to discover new lands so age of exploration age of discovery was very very important unless and until new areas were discovered new lands were discovered where will you sell so much production that is taking place the next was trade now as the trade developed with the railway line the development of railway line with the digging of canals with the uh, ship development 
all this so new towns coming up new cities coming up and the population that resided in the rural areas started to move towards the towns the nations came closer to one another and also we saw that there was concentration of power the concentration of power was in the hands of few that means there was power with the capitalists the workers were treated with unhealthy living conditions unhealthy um, uh, uh, the living areas and the vicinity and social inequality started to increase in the society also this was the time where movements started so there was a need to pass factory acts in order to save the rights of the factory workers so in 1830s and 1840s there was a movement which was known as chartist movement and this chartist movement said that there should be right to vote for the factory workers also with the rising inequality we have seen with the evils of capitalism there was a movement of socialism a movement a way for communism that started to take place because the rights of these people needs to be checked and this could be done only through checking the evils of capitalism so evils of capitalism could be checked through rising socialism and communism the next was the idea of laissez faire laissez faire said that let us alone let us alone means the state should not interfere leave us alone no interference of the state should be done and this was the idea of laissez faire all nations came to accept the idea the state has a legitimate right and duty but state would not interfere state would not fall into the matters of the Uh, industries and that was very very important so those were some of the major impacts which were witnessed by industrial revolution as we said industrial revolution was a major transition in the european history from middle ages to modern ages and again we saw a wave of imperialism which was witnessed post industrial revolution the last period of transition in the society was imperialism imperialism was a idea of mother country what was the mother country the country that rules the world starts to dominate itself not only in the economic spheres but also in the political life in the social life of other countries and this mother country start to develop the colonies across the globe so as you can see the sun shining here this was the mother country the region where you have the imperialist society the england the the england that was seen and this england was able to control and shadow the world so this were the colonies which were established colonies were mainly from africa mainly from asia and this imperialism started as a wave where one nation started to create colonies and these colonies were for two purpose what first was the source of raw material they provided raw material to england so england was given the raw material and england provided the finished products to these countries or to these colonies so the mother country provided the finished products which was much more cheaper as compared to their local production and therefore was mainly uh, demanded in the market and the mother country could derive excessive profits and this was the basis for imperialism now how this imperialism works it was first that the industrialization starts in the mother country that is the united kingdom or the england now with the industrialization there was rising capitalization or the capitalism so rise of capitalism was seen and with the capitalism rising there was rise of imperialism now with this imperialism there were two things that were noted the first was the political subjugation that was seen so initially some places england started to move as a political supremacy and at other places it started to move as an economic subjugation that means for some places it moved for trade relations for other places it moved for political purpose but later 
the political reasons were converted into economic reasons and in some places economic reasons were converted into political reasons but what were the basic causes for rising imperialism rising imperialism witnessed nine basic causes the first was as we mentioned a lot of production industries started to come up in england france portugal and in 1870s even in germany and italy and they required places to sell their product so there were colonies which came into existence and these colonies were again the source of raw material in order to survive their industries they required raw material this raw material could come from the colonies of asia and africa mainly cotton mainly minerals and all this could be possible through what how would the raw material and finished product go definitely transportation so invention of steam engines invention of railways telegraph uh, moving to different lands conquering different lands and establishing trade relations became very very important the next was rising population pressure in europe the population explosion took place with this extra population we requ they required colonies where they could shift their population and actually depopulate themselves so to depopulate and to release the population pressure from europe the colonies became very very essential these colonies uh, these uh, this mother country was the region where industrial uh, capitalism was seen that means business expansion started to take place better opportunities better developments better capital and with rising profits there was a scope for more investment uh, let's say i am a company i earn certain amount and then i have certain profit with me so what i can do is i can reinvest that profit again in the company so with more profits rising more reinvestment started to come and this further paved way for better developments better opportunities and also a uh, idea of nationalism a false nationalism which was through acquiring the colonies acquiring the colonies they had a false sense of national pride considering that all new colonies were their military and naval bases the next basic reason for rising imperialism was missionaries the idea was to spread christianity far and wide so these christian missionaries started to spread ideas and they considered themselves much more civilized than other people and they said that this is a white man's burden to civilize the uncultured population or the backward areas of asia and africa so there were civilization missions that started and moreover new lands were required in asia america africa and therefore geographical explorations became important so what was the basic impact of imperialism impact impact of imperialism can be weighted as a positive and negative impact let's first talk about a little positive so that it creates interest before we look on to the drawbacks of it the positive systems were definitely building of what we see in india the present day postal system the present day railway system the modern system of education starting of the english as a medium of instruction so developments in education new roads new infrastructures that were developed development in the field of science health and infrastructure so infrastructure included roads in, included railways shipping uh, canals which were built so all those were some of the positive impacts which were witnessed by the imperialists by the mother country in the various colonies not just india but there were numerous drawbacks associated the first important drawback was these this imperialist attitude led to world war 1 world war 2 which devastated most of the kind of livelihoods that existed brought in huge amount of economic exploitation of the colonies and raw material was totally wiped from the colonies and they became a mere source of the finished products 
a destination for the finished products from this mother country so that was the negative side of the imperialism now imperialism in south asia was again very very uh, remarkably important because in south america south asia we have seen that it was mainly uh, there was a feeling of nationalism among the people of south asia against the rising power of the mother country and as a result there was a movement to fight against it so people started to unite countries like india witnessed independence movement countries like vietnam then in sri lanka it was firstly the portuguese who came to power which were overthrown by dutch overthrown by britishers and finally there were plantations of tea and rubber which were established in sri lanka not only in this even if we talk about malay peninsula we see that dutch initially came to power which were replaced by britishers so dutch replaced by britishers indonesia again it was under dutch control for a very long period the countries of indochina mainly laos vietnam and cambodia was initially under france uh, burma was annexed and became part of british empire during this time holland extended power to moluccas uh, china was divided uh, into a sphere of influence and it was called by european powers as cutting off the chinese melon the western powers started to establish indirect imperialism in china and this totally destroyed the socio economic political system in china so there was a kind of unity among the people a revolution that started among the masses and rise of nationalism was seen in most of the countries of south asia and this is something which led to the indian national movement and the roots of indian national movement which we would understand further into detail so this was just a outline to help us understand why and how imperialism was one of the leading reasons for rising nationalism in the colonies where british was in power thank you